Generation X isn't just a group of people. It's an audience. And if there's anything Hollywood loves, they do love an audience. Generation X is, among other things, a generation hungry for nostalgia. We seem to have a yearning for things from our childhood, and we want to see new, updated versions of those things, please. Especially when it comes to movies. Transformers, Superman, G.I. Joe, The A-Team, Jim, Aeon Flux, The Smurfs, and so on. Hollywood is rife with entertainment from the younger days of Gen X. Depending on who you ask and what property you're talking about, the movie industry is either introducing great stories and great characters to a whole new generation, or they're raping our childhood. To some, certain things are sacred. I know people who will never forgive Michael Bay for what he did to Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And while some movies are horrible, they're not bad only because they ripped off a beloved character for greedy profit. Usually, it's just a bad film. If Jim and the Holograms never existed as an 80s cartoon, the Jim and the Holograms movie from 2015 would still be a pretty lousy film. The thing is, what happens when a remake takes things in a whole new direction? What happens when it's not simply a case of, let's tell this story again, but with a modern twist? In 2016's remake of Ghostbusters, a movie released originally in 1984, unleashed a rare controversy upon the remake landscape. This time, the fans weren't decrying it just because it was a remake of a beloved classic horror comedy. It wasn't because it wouldn't carry on with the same storyline as the original. It wasn't even because the original stars, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, and Dan Aykroyd, wouldn't star in it. Never mind that Harold Ramis died in 2014, shattering the dream of a full cast remake. No, seemingly millions of Ghostbusters fans were pissed off because the new Ghostbusters crew was entirely female. I'm Daniel Messer, the cyberpunk librarian. Welcome to Generating X. The Ghostbusters of 2016 arrived in a world so very different from that of 1984. The original movie took place in a time before the internet, before a computer in every home and a smartphone in every pocket. People watched television shows when they were on, rather than recording them for later. Time shifting sounded like something that Marty McFly might have done. After all, in 1984, VHS cassettes were still considered a pretty neat idea. If you think about it, the plot of the original Ghostbusters wasn't all that different from lots of movies. There's a group of guys who need to save the world. Along the way, there's a lady who needs rescuing, bureaucracy that needs fighting, and wrongs that need righting. Busting ghosts was a pretty unique angle, but Scooby-Doo had been doing that for years, just in a different way. No, it could easily be said that the thing that made Ghostbusters so good was the cast. You take the comedic talents of Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, and Dan Aykroyd, and pair them against Ernie Hudson as the straight man. Throw in Rick Moranis, who, strangely enough, provides comic relief in a comedy, and then give us Sigourney Weaver as the beautiful lady in over her head. That was a winning combination right there. And though she didn't have large amounts of time on screen, Annie Potts was amazing as the consummate New York smartass. 
Not a bad bit of acting, since she's from Tennessee. Really, the plot is ridiculous. College professors create a startup as paranormal exterminators. But with that cast, we bought into it all the way. Then along comes 2016 and a new Ghostbusters movie, and almost all the gang is back. Except for Harold Ramis. May he rest in peace. One problem, though. They're not the stars. No, we've got four new people in the starring roles. Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon. And you know what all four of those people have in common? Well, if you listen to this new world full of Gamergate, men's rights advocacy, and Twitter bullying, then the shocking thing these four people have in common is vaginas. My God, they're all women. The new Ghostbusters is gonna suck. The online rage surrounding the movie was hard to ignore, and almost all of it centered around the stars and their gender. Very few, if any, of these armchair critics were complaining about the plotline, or the leap to CGI from practical effects, or the comedy. No one even cared if it was funny or not. None of that seemed to matter so long as the stars were wearing bras. The fact that all the original cast members were featured cameos in the movie did nothing to placate the misogynism. Their childhood was dead. Ghostbusters was ruined forever. Me? I say to hell with these people. If you're not going into a movie with an open mind, remake or not, then you're not giving the movie or yourself a fair chance. And if the all-female cast is all you're going to focus on, well, then you've already lost me. There was a similar, though not so brazen, outcry when it was discovered that Star Trek Voyager would have a female starship captain. I guess it was okay for Uhura to answer the phone and talk to Starfleet, but putting a woman in the captain's chair? <sighs> that was a step too far for some people. The thing is, few people seem to recognize that, like the new Star Trek movies, Ghostbusters is set in an alternate universe. The events of 1984 are never mentioned, and that's because in the new movie, these events never happened. Still, the bits and pieces of the original story are all there. You have a scientist who's totally into what she's doing and is an expert in the realm of paranormal phenomenon. She's highly intelligent, but not quite as intelligent as this other scientist who can build things like unlicensed nuclear accelerators that you can wear on your back. Then there's the third scientist who's a bit put off by the whole notion, but goes along with the other two, kind of because she's not fully in control of her own life. They launch a small business as paranormal exterminators and hire a receptionist who isn't really a good fit for the job. Eventually, they meet up with another character who's not exactly a scientist, but she's certainly not stupid. They give her a job, and the four of them go out and capture ghosts, fend off unwarranted and incompetent government interference, fight off a massive threat in the form of an interdimensional paranormal portal, and save New York City and the world from a powerful entity from the other side. I've literally just told you the plot of both Ghostbusters movies. But what matters is the details. How these events happen are totally different from one movie to the other. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, and Sigourney Weaver showing up in other roles in the new movie? Not only is that fan service, it's a nod that some people, places, and things may look familiar, but they're not quite the same. Ghostbusters is a classic example of a generation latching onto something as if it belongs to them, when it really doesn't. Sure, Generation X watched Ghostbusters when they were kids, and it was a huge part of our childhood. There were Ghostbusters toys, video games, and even a cartoon that ran 140 episodes. It's easy to see why Gen X and generations before and after lay claim to certain parts of popular culture as if it belongs to them. When something is such a massive part of your world as you're maturing, it becomes part of your cultural unconscious. It's always been there, even though the original wasn't there before 1984. Thing is, a movie doesn't belong to a generation any more than it belongs to the caterer who brought snacks to the set while they were shooting the film. 
Because it's part of the collective childhood experience of a generation, it gains a spatial and totally illegitimate significance. The movie belongs to the viewer. For that brief period of time, when you're watching it on the big screen, or your own screen, that movie is yours. It doesn't matter if it's a blockbuster new release or if it's a Buster Keaton comedy from 1926. There are few people around today who would lay a generational claim upon a Buster Keaton movie. And yet that doesn't make those movies anything more or less than something you may or may not enjoy. I guess it all depends on whether you're into Buster Keaton. But for me, in 2016, I went into the cinema to see Ghostbusters, and I went in with a similar mind as when I saw the original movie at my friend's house. I knew it was a comedy, I knew that there were four main characters, and I knew that ghostbusting was involved. Other than that, I was ready for something fun and funny. And damn it, I got it too, in both time periods. Folks, the new Ghostbusters is just like the old Ghostbusters, while being totally different. It's hilarious, it's got some spooky bits. I love the characters, and just like with the original, I have my favorite. See, I love all the ghost-busting dudes, but when you get right down to it, Egon is my man. Dr. Egon Spengler, played by Harold Ramis, is one of my all-time favorite movie characters. Why is that? Well, that's another show in and of itself, but let's just say I really dig semi-crazy nerd characters. So needless to say, I absolutely fell in love with Kate McKinnon as Dr. Jillian Holtzman. She's a brilliant, slightly off-center, queer scientist engineer who isn't there to be a gender-bent Spangler. No, she's very much her own character. She's her own person. The great thing about the new movie is that while all of these characters share some things in common with the classic ones, they're still unique. Aaron isn't Peter. Abby isn't Ray. Patty isn't Winston, and Jillian certainly isn't Egon. These are new people in a new story. The story rings in harmony with the original, but it's not the same chord. The new Ghostbusters isn't the old Ghostbusters, and it's not really meant to be from what I can see. It's a new take, as I said, an alternate universe, something different and yet the same. But if you want to rage at it, because it's an affront to your version of the movie. Okay, but just consider this. The original Ghostbusters came out in 1984. This new one, it came out in 2016. And you know what that means? This new one, it doesn't belong to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Halloween edition of Generating X. Thank you so much for checking out the show. If you're brand new here, tell your friends and family about it, especially if they happen to be a Gen Xer, because, hey, this show is all about you and all about us for other people to maybe just gain a little bit of understanding as to what the heck is going on inside the culture of Generation X. Earlier in the show, you heard Electric Donkey Muscles by Rocco W. As always, the opening track is Bacterial Love by Roll Music. Generating X would like to thank the Internet Archive at archive.org for hosting this show, so many other podcasts like this, and podcasts that are nothing like this at all. Check out the Internet Archive at archive.org where you will find all kinds of great content from ebooks to software to video games to movies to all kinds of great stuff. They've got some great classic horror films over there, so if you need a little something, you know, with that classic bent, something kind of fun and cheesy for your Halloween evening tonight. Well, you know, strangely enough, you can get something over at the Internet Archive. Check them out at archive.org. 
If you'd like to get in touch with me, I highly recommend you do so. You can hit me up on Twitter where I am at Bibrarian. That's B-I-B-R-A-R-I-A-N. It's like librarian, but it starts with a B. You can also join me at Facebook.com slash Cyberpunk Librarian where we talk about this show and my other show that is all about the intersection of libraries and technology. That's right, Cyberpunk Librarian. If you're into libraries, if you're into tech, and if on the weird off chance you happen to be into both, you might check it out. Same uh, same site at cyberpunklibrarian.com slash podcast where you can find show notes for this show and all kinds of other shows before and after. And if you always, uh, you know, your friend to that whole SMTP email thing that some people still do, I know it's weird. It's amazing that thing's still hanging around. You can get me at cyberpunklibrarian at gmail.com. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Generating X, and I will see you on the next episode Take care now.